To solve part A, we'll be using these two formulas right here, and that is the average power is equal to the maximum power divided by 2, and the root mean square voltage is equal to the maximum voltage divided by the square root of 2. The reason we're using these two formulas is because we're using an alternating current. And when we use an alternating current, the graphs will look a little something like these. We're interested in the average of these graphs. Now, when solving these types of questions, we need to be mindful of the type of power and voltages and currents that we are using, we can't mix the maximum power with the root mean square voltage if we're trying to calculate for the current. It needs to be consistent. So with that in mind, there are two ways that we can go about solving this. The first is to find the maximum voltage. The first is to find the root mean square voltage and pair that with the average power. So if we go ahead and do that, we'll find that we'll get a root mean square voltage of about 120 volts. The next thing to do is to use one of these power equations. There are three. We have I times delta V, we have I squared R, or we can use delta V squared over R. The most useful one for this question will be the third one right here. Since we now have the average versions for the power and the voltage, we can go ahead and plug them into the power formula right here. And we'll find that we'll get a resistance of 193 ohms. Now, the second way that we can do this is once again we'll be using these two formulas right here. A quick side note, this line on top of the P, this is called P bar. It's a symbol that we can use to denote the average power. So if you come across this, I just want us to be culturally aware that this means the average power. So we can go ahead and find the maximum power this time around. So we'll get that the maximum power is about 150 watts. We'll go ahead and plug it into the power equation once again. This time we're dealing with the maximum power and voltage. So we're using the correct version. We'll go ahead and substitute the numbers and we'll get the same answer. We'll get a resistance of 193 ohms. For part B, it's more or less the same way in which which we will solve the question. Part B is asking what is the resistance of a 100 watt bulb. If you understand how to solve part A, you will do the same techniques and solve part B the same way you do with part A. 